don't need that now. None of us do. We've all made mistakes. We're trying to reach true perfection, and we will one day, and it's going to take place. And one of the things that we need to get rid of is the unforgiveness. It needs to be gone. There, there shouldn't be any unforgiveness. I mean, you have to be quick to forgive. Don't sit and dwell upon, oh, well, they hurt me. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to hold that grudge for a year or two years or three years. Who's it going to benefit? Nobody. Is God going to move in your life? No. All because of your unwillingness to forgive. And God spoke, and we just read it. He's very strong about this. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this unforgiveness because it's important. <clears throat> now, we're going to look at some examples. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Paul. Okay. Now let's consider the life of Paul and how he felt about his past mistakes and how God's grace helped him to forget his past. Turn with me to First Timothy chapter one. Verse twelve. Now, who was Paul? He had his name changed from Saul, right? We all remember that. Who was Saul? What did he do? He persecuted the church. He had people killed. He was holding the coats of those that stoned Stephen, the man of faith. Do you think his conscience and his mind was bothering him? And then to turn around, he asked for forgiveness from God. Forgive used him in the ministry. He was a mighty man of God, but, but look at his past. Let's look at this. Let me turn to it. I told y'all to turn to it, and I didn't do it. First Timothy chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 12. Everybody have it? It says, Now I thank Jesus Christ our Lord, who has enabled me, because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Now, we're talking about Paul. Remember, Paul was a persecutor of the way. It says, although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolvent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And it says, and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant. That's what we all know. Exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who I am chief. However, for this reason, I obtained mercy, that in me, first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to who? To those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. If God was able to forgive what Paul did, do you not think that he can forgive you what you did? And then he turned around and used him in ministry? God's abundant grace. That this man, Saul, was killing Christians in the early church, but yet God chose to forgive him. Of what he did because he said he did it in me and in unbelief. And then God turns around and uses him. That takes a whole lot of love from God to be able to do that. So if he asked to be forgiven, God forgave him and forgot about his past. He needs to do the same. 
Now let's read about what Paul said about himself about forgiveness. Turn with me to Philippians. Now look at what he said here. Philippians chapter 3. Starting in verse 12. This is how he overcame that hindrance of what he had done, what he had committed, those sins that he had done in him. This is how he got rid of them. Check out what he said. Philippians 3. Verse 12. It says, Not that I have already obtained or am already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing. But one thing I do. What does he say? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. He was able to forgive himself. God forgave him. He forgave himself because he did what? What did he say? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. See, we'll never get ahead if we look to get ahead. God can't use you. God can't do nothing for you because you're dwelling on what you had done. God forgave me. He forgot it. Get over it. Be strong. God's grace will provide sufficient help. God ain't going to recall what you did. If you ask for true repentance and forgiveness, He ain't going to remember. So you don't need to remember. Now, Two things I want you to take notice of. And that is, we are to forget those things which are behind. Meaning, past mistakes, failures, and looking forward to what God has for us. We must learn this before we can go on with God. We have to forgive, forget our past mistakes to succeed. Now, forgiveness is a very important spiritual concept. This is why God the Father sent Jesus forth into the world. Think about it. Why did he have to send him? People were not living right now. They were living in sin. They were unrepentant. So what did God have to do? We have all asked for forgiveness from God and he forgave us and forgot about our past mistakes. We as believers can't hang on to the past or we'll be handicapped all the rest of our lives trying to live for God. It's going to handicap you. It's like walking with one leg all your life because you ain't able to forgive and forget. Get past your past. Get it. Don't let the devil remind you of it. But if you dwell on it and you think about it all the time, that's what the devil's going to do. He's going to keep you down to where you're dwelling on it and now your faith and your prayers go in vain. Your direction never comes. All because of that. Look at how God used Paul. Paul was a horrible man. Well, Saul was before God came to killing people, all because they didn't want to live by the law. It's horrible. 
They hadn't done anything wrong. It was a spiritual law. It wasn't like they had gone out and stole from somebody. It was all a spiritual law, and he was killing them. Think about it. That's awful. That's like if you came into my yard and you picked up something that didn't belong to you, I'd go out there and strike you dead. Instead of saying, hey, put that back. You know, you can do that. Well, we, it wasn't a grievous matter. It was just a matter of breaking the religious law that he was killing people. That's horrible. But God forgave him. Used him in a great way. Now we have all these epistles, these letters to his churches, showing us how we, as believers, should live. So, don't look back. Focus on what's ahead. Now, I've got a few more other things to share with you, and then we'll conclude. We're still human, and we miss the mark at times. But we must not live in the past, in our past. That's why God sent us a Savior. To help us to become overcomers in this evil and wicked world. Let's turn to 1 John again. I want us to read a few verses here. That we read a little bit of it, but I want us to read the whole thing. 1 John 4, and we'll start in verse 7 through 12. Anybody have it? 1 John 4. Starting in verse 7. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. Pretty simple. For love is of God. And everybody who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. For God sent him. In this the love of God was manifested towards us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the perpetuation of our sins. He was the substitute for our sins. He took on all our sins, our sins before we came to Christ, and our sins that we've committed after we've come to Christ. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been that's the only way that people are going to be able to see God is the way we express love towards Him. Especially those that don't have a clue about the things of God. If they don't see us expressing love, the ones that call themselves a Christian, how are they going to ever come to Christ? They're not. They have to see that genuine love, that concern that we have for our fellow man. They don't see that we, we won't.